Test, test, hello. How's everybody doing? Is this coming through? Looks like we're coming through. How y'all doing? I'm not 100% sure. This is my first time trying to do a a multicast, multi-stream. So, okay. So, I want to talk about lead guitar today. How's it going, y'all? How's that? What's up? We're going to talk some lead guitar. Just FYI, I um uh I am uh, Oh, a lot of people on YouTube. Cool. I um uh, like I was saying, this is my first time doing a uh, multi-stream and I, there's a big delay because I'm using Restream and the delay's like <laughs> 10 seconds or so. So I may, if I see your comment, it may be a little bit late, but let's talk about, oh uh, yeah. So let me know about the sound. Hey there, Alberta, Canada. What's up? Show us something sweet. <laughs> So uh, I want to talk about lead guitar. Um, no, I wasn't. Uh, someone said they're from Alberta. Anyway, sorry, my I'm a little bit far from where I'm supposed to see the uh, the the comments and stuff. But hello, everyone. Nice to see you all here. So um, yeah, let, feel free to uh, comment about the sound. Um, if the mic is too low, or if the guitar is too low, or whatever like that. Am I in Sacramento? No, I used to. I grew up in Sacramento. No, I live in the Bay Area. Hey, f hey, Scotland. Hey, Davy McGregor. Um, Goodrich, Ontario. Nice. Fantastic. Hey, Missouri. Hey, Ireland. I won't do my terrible Irish accent and, and offend you today. Play some Dead Milkman licks. <laughs> Let's see. Do I remember that one? Dead milkman stuff is surprisingly complicated, very difficult. It's way harder than people might think. Um, I did a video on it, and and yeah, I was just he the the lead guitarist did some pretty crazy stuff. Um, anyway, um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, lead guitar. Let's talk a little bit about lead guitar. So the first thing that obviously the first thing I teach all of my students right off the rip is is the pentatonic scale. <laughs> And we sort of practice it in A. Um, so, you know, that's a good place to start, especially if you're a total beginner. And um, and then I then obviously I, I'll, I'll teach everybody patterns um, like and hammer ons and pull offs. And I like to apply them to that. Or the three pattern, which I did a video on recently. Rock Lobster. Right, the three pattern is super important. And then, um, you know, ba other skills such as vibrato, bends, those are all part of what I teach my students when, when they're working on their lead guitar playing. Um, rock Lobster. There, you happy? There. So, and then of course the big thing that, a big question that I get a lot is how do you break out of the pentatonic scale? Now, like a lot of you, I spent years stuck in the pentatonic scale and, or just the one form, not just the pentatonic, but just that one form. So for me, what's really important is that you get used to, that you break out of just the one form and learn all of the other forms. Not just learn them, but learn how to connect them. That was what was confusing to me when I was first starting out. So I have them as five different forms. So you've got form one, which is the one we all know, the minor pentatonic. And then you've got form two, which starts in the second note of form one, which is the major pentatonic. And then you've got form three, which starts in the second note of form two, which is the, well, that's just form three. And then you've got form four, which starts on the second note of form three. 
And then you've got form five, which starts in the second note of form four. You are an Aerosmith stagehand. Right on, man. I like Aerosmith. I even like their 80s, 90s stuff. A lot of people gave them a hard time for sounding a little more, I don't know, whatever. But I actually like that stuff. I thought they did a good job reinventing themselves. Anyway, back to what I was saying. So those are the five forms. And right off the bat, if you learn all those five forms and you learn how to connect them, that's going to help you quite a bit in um, getting out of just being stuck in this one position on the guitar. Um, and then another thing that I've been, that I teach is to, since you started by learning your pentatonic scale, you then, um, give, you then start to do, um, you add the diatonic notes, which are the minor scale or major scale notes, the extra notes, by the way, if you haven't already get your guitar and follow along and let's, you know, let's actually learn some stuff. So for example, on form one, this pentatonic, <laughs> You can add um, the diatonic notes, so it would be. Okay, someone's asking how I connect the pentatonic scales. So let me explain it one more time. It's like a stack. So um, the form one, which is the one everybody's learned. Right, that's the one everybody's learned. So you go to the second note. So play form one and stop at the pinky on the sixth string. And then put your middle finger there. And from there, play the next pentatonic scale. Um, so I'll quickly go over it just because I'm a nice guy. Um, so right now I'm starting on the eighth fret of the sixth string. So you would go eight, ten on the sixth string. Nine, ten. Uh, sorry. 7, 10 on the 5th string, 7, 10 on the 4th string, 7, 9 on the 3rd string, 8, 10 on the 2nd string, and 8, 10 on the 1st string. 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10. So that's, you are playing the same notes as you were when you were playing the other one. You can hear it. Hear it? And then it goes up one extra note. example if you're an e minor and g major i'm not sure i i don't quite understand that question so anyway um i actually have a sublime video coming out somewhat soon um well at some point but anyway back to this so then so that was form two and then form three starts in the second note of form two so just play form two and then go up to the second note and then put your first finger in that spot where your pinky was just a second ago, which would be on the 10th fret of the 6th string. And then you're going to go 10, 12 on the 6th string, 10, 12 on the 5th string, 10, 12 on the 4th string, 9, 12 on the 3rd string, 9, 13 on the 2nd string, and 10, 12 on the 1st string. That's form 3. And then form four, you just go to the second note of form three. So play form three again, and then stop at the second note and put your first finger there. Now you're moving into the form four position. So then you're gonna go 12, 15 on the sixth string, 12, 15 on the fifth string, 12, 14 on the fourth, 12, 14 on the third string, 13, 15 on the second string, and 12, 15 on the first string. Okay, so that's form four. And then to find form five, you go to the second note of form four. So there, you, there you're at the 15th fret on the sixth string. Move your first finger over to there. And then you're going to go 15, 17, 15, 17, uh, 14, 17, 14, 17, 15, 17, 15, 17. Or you can move the whole thing down an octave lower and go 3, 5, 3, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5. Three, five. Either way, you're playing the same notes as the A minor pentatonic. There was a question earlier. Hold on.
So y- yes, can you play any form of pentatonic anywhere on the neck? Yeah, it just it's the it's a matter of where the, what key you're playing, and it'll change the key. So right now I'm in form I'm in A minor. So starting at the fifth fret, this scale is A minor. And then as long as I stack them, as long as I connect them the way I was just showing you, I'm staying in A minor the whole time. Oops, sorry. And so on. I'm staying in A minor the whole time. So as so then you can but then you could play you know, take for example form three. I could play that down here at the fifth fret. But now I'm in the key of E minor, because now I'm building it off of this. That's form one, form two, form three, and, ex- and so on. So you sort of, so they all go, they all connect to each other. And as long as you're connecting to them to each other, the way I was showing you, you're staying in that same key. And then you create a different starting place depending on what key you want to be in. And then just real quick, last little thing on that. Form one is the minor pentatonic scale. Awesome, Tony. By the way, I always went by Tony as a kid, but I don't now. And sometimes people like to call me Tony, even though I'm Anthony, and that makes me... But anyway. (laughs) So form one, the first note of form one is the minor, is the minor key. The um, uh, the minor key. So so if I play my pentatonic scale, the main scale that we've all learned, the first note of it determines its what key it's in as minor. But here's another thing: the second note is what key it's in as major. So if I play the second note of my pentatonic scale, that's C. That means I'm in the C major pentatonic scale. Because C major and A minor are equivalent. They are the relative keys. Um, Tips for practicing with a metronome. Well, one tip I have is don't use a metronome. Use a play-along track. Use a backing track. Use a backing track that is a tempo that you want to play to. Then you're getting drums, you're getting music, you're getting all of that, and you're essentially getting a metronome. Um, that's my feeling about it. That's one of my feelings about it. And, and then it's a lot more enjoyable and you can do the same stuff. Like say you get a backing track. That's like a good one is like a slow, um, like right. If it's a slow blues, then it's like a metronome and you can go up and down and you can do a lot of the same exercises. And then you could do eighth notes and and so on and so forth. So that's one option. Now, as far as a metronome goes, yeah, it's tricky. The ironic thing about a metronome is if you don't hear the click, that means you're on beat. If you're hearing the click, you're probably not on beat. <laughs> so, okay, I'm kind of comfortable to move between forms of the minor pentatonic, but I've heard of adding a major note once in a while. Okay, so that's a good point. Um, one tip, one thing that you can do to help with that is is actually take your pentatonic scale and play it like play the normal scale and then go back and forth between playing the major pentatonic scale in that same key then you know what the notes are of course um the other thing you can do so that's one way that you can at least get a feel for what are the major notes You know, that'll help you at least locate what the major notes are. 
Another thing is, is that you build it around that major E chord, for example. You know, if you notice, your pentaton every pentatonic scale is sort of built around a chord, right? Now this one, your main, your main pentatonic scale is built sort of over the E minor chord. But if you add that major note, then you're making it E major. So then you're adding that that one little easy note right there. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jimi Hendrix did. He, he did that a lot where he would go back and forth and add little major notes in there. Um, so if you if you're any of your forms, you can actually find the fundamental um, chord that's being expressed in it. Like form four, um, let's see, in, in E minor, form four is right here. And there's your shape right there. So I'm a proponent of sort of practicing things, practicing scales like the major scale and then the minor scale in the same position going back and forth between the two of them. Um, like so if we're getting into the diatonic scales. can do stuff like that at least so you get it <laughs> what's his face jimmy hendrix well you know i'm sort of rapid fire talking i forget stuff um solo two. what was it somebody was duran duran yeah I, sh I haven't done any duran duran okay i will i will put that down thanks a lot man uh matt Yes, yes, I try to put factoids. Sometimes I try to have them related directly to my life. Sometimes I just try to have them be about the song itself. So anyway, throw any questions in there. Um, there's a lot of comments here, so I'm trying to get them as best I can. I should probably have my glasses on, but I don't. Um, uh, so I'm doing my best to kind of see <laughs> the comments, but feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm going to throw out some more ideas about playing lead. Um, whose songs do you find the most challenging to figure out? Uh, well, I don't, uh, okay. I mean, yes, there are, there are certain ones that are trickier than others. Uh, here's one. I'll just, okay, I'll be straight. I won't give my norm. My normal answer is I don't really think of it that way as songs being challenging. I just think of them as songs being songs that I'm not experienced playing yet. However, right off the bat, I would tell you that the most difficult songs I've ever learned were um, solos from Gypsy Jazz, from Django, stuff like that. But as far as they go, the most probably, and, and I'm working on it right now, probably the most difficult song that I've been trying to, because I want to make a video, is this one. <laughs> Right? That one is incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult um, to play it really well, um, especially on the acoustic guitar. There's a lot of little, I mean, you can't just see for me, one thing a lot of people don't necessarily understand. Um, how do you combine playing chords and individual notes? Oh, well, that's a great question. Um, real quick, though, one thing that probably a lot of people don't un don't know is that the majority of my videos that you see where I talk about a song and then I play it, I learned that I whatever that part is, 
I learned it that morning, like, or the night before I'll spend 20, 30 minutes on a part and I'll just quickly learn it. And that's how I do most of my stuff. Um, I'll learn the part. That's why sometimes I'm rushing. Sometimes you'll see in my video, I'll be rushing. And that's because I just learned the part. I don't know it as well as I, you know, would like to. And I keep messing it up. And the more I mess it up, the more I slowly start rushing as I do like take 15, take 16. So, but anyway, with this song, with, with crazy on you, no, I, I tried to just, I thought, you know, I'm good enough. I can just learn it the night before real quick and play it. But then I discovered I couldn't. <laughs> hey, Bo Rack, thank you. Uh, let's see. Bo Rock, thank you very much for the super gift, man. I appreciate it. I uh, really liked my Behind Blue Eyes video. Nice. Right on, Bo Rock. By the way, yes, I will definitely mention your comment and shout, give you a shout out if you give me a super gift. Um... Thank you, Mike. I try. I'm trying. So anyway, uh, how do you connect chords with lead notes? That is a great question. First thing you got to do is study jazz. <laughs> um, so that's that that takes a lot of work. That is a that is a skill that takes a lot of work. Um, I would say, first of all, you need to study. You need to do. Um, you need to learn um, arpeggios. It's going to help if you understand arpeggios. Um, yeah, arpeggios are going to help quite a bit because they'll they'll help you know your chord tones and they'll help you see your chords as individual tones and not just as, you know, strumming, right? And then, of course, knowing your major scales really well is going to help as well because that's going to help you connect them. Now, um, also knowing triads really well is going to help um, because then you're, you're narrowing it down to smaller parts of the fretboard. Um, but w w here's an exercise. If you're wanting to, v what w I, I think a lot of people call that voice leading. And it, um, if you're wanting to uh, do that, if you're wanting to do that a lot more, if you're wanting to do a lot more voice leading, then one suggestion I have is take a song and learn the melody and um, learn the chords. Obviously, you need to know the chords. You need to know the melody. And then, and then practice playing the melody in, a, in one specific position where all the chords are, you know. There's one. So all of me... See, this brings me back to my gypsy jazz days. So all of me... Starts with this C chord, and you do this little, oops, and then it goes to this E chord, and you play it as a bar chord right here, okay, and then you go to um, A minor 7 chord. Right, and then you, you see, so the other thing you're going to have to know if you're going to do voice leading, you're going to have to know all the different, you know, all the different ways to play any given chord up the guitar neck. And that's, maybe that's a skill that a lot of people, I t people sort of take for granted once they know how to do that, but that's a super important skill, right? So you know that you can play E here, right? You know you can play E here. Sorry. <laughs> yes, you know you can play E here. You know you can play it here. So you know all the, you know, and then you can break it down into little triads. You see what I mean? 
things like that. If you you need to be able to do that with 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 any chord. You need to be able to just sort of quickly. Oh, okay. Well, C. Let's see. Right. Things like that. You've got to be able to do that. Those are the skills. And then, of course, playing your major scales in each key so that you can find the melody or your diatonic scales so you can really find the melody. Okay? So those are some of the things. Any more questions? Let's see. Funk 49, Stone and Lover 2. Oh, right. Dan, thank you. Yeah, well, um, Funk 49, I'm not sure what I showed you that was a little bit different. Um, and... Okay, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I, uh, the main reason I do any video that says this is the, uh, and I try not to say this is the right way to play anything, you know. Oh, hey, David, thanks for taking the time to answer my question. No problem, David. Thank you for the super gift. Um, anytime that I do a video, or the re, sorry, the reason I do videos where I'll say like, you know, I discovered that other people are playing this song wrong or something. And I try not to say wrong or, or I'll say, you know, this is the right way to play this song, or this is a song that a lot of people don't get right. And this is the right way to play it. Blah, 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 blah. I do those videos because they get really good views, you know, and, um, especially on Facebook right now, um, they're paying me money, like good money. And they give me a bonus if I get a certain amount of videos over a certain amount of views. So those are kind of like, I, I don't like saying this is the right way, this is the wrong way, at least, at least in so far as um, wrong, like if it's just a little off. There are a lot of people out there who are like, you have to get every note exactly perfect, every inflection, every little bit, every little da 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 exactly right. And I don't prescribe to that. If you've got the chords right and you've got the rhythm right, and if I, you know, it's kind of like the old saying um, about uh, replay in football. If if a hundred people in a bar yell touchdown, it's a touchdown no matter what the replay says. If a hundred people in the bar recognize that you're playing this song, then you're playing it right, even if you're not playing it exactly like they want it, that like the the recording. If you have this desire to play it exactly like the recording, that's cool. And there's a big market for that because whenever I do a video, most of the time when I do a video where I say, you know, you no, know, a lot of people play this wrong. Here's the right way. It blows up, you know, especially you know. <laughs> Right. Okay. How do you use a wah pedal? Oh man. Well, I'm not a wah guy. I am not a wah guy. I am. But when I do use a wah pedal, I try to use it as I, I try to use it for rhythm. Wow. 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 You know, I try to, I try to wah at the tempo of the song, the beat of the song that I'm playing. That's my best advice there. Um, other than that is experiment. Just do it. With everything else in the guitar, you know, you just got to do it. You do it and do it until it, until you start getting it right. Yeah, um, let's see. Can I give you a pretty good, can, uh, can you give me a good practice strategy? Um, well, it, it really depends on what your, your goals are. It's hard to say that exact um, without seeing you play, but you know, I would say break up your practicing in, into technical and, and just enjoyment, right? Like spend some time practicing your scales, just working on your scales, right? Just practicing up and down, hammer-ons, pull-offs, whatever it is you need to work on. Right, just work on whatever things that you're, you know, with your scales up and down, all of your scales, all of that stuff, just to, that's partly to warm up. Um, if you're working on your picking sk speed, you know, that's a good way to just get your picking speeds, get your juices flowing and stuff. Um, 
And then maybe, you know, let's say there's a riff you're working on. Spend some time on the riff. If there's like a, you know, like I'm kind of talking about how I teach a lesson. Excuse me. So the way I teach a lesson is that I'll have them start by playing their scales and some exercises. And I structure my lessons kind of like how I want my students to practice. So they practice their scales. They practice their, you know, things like that exercises, things along those lines to warm up and then dive into what songs you're working on, you know, dive into the songs you're working on. And if you, you know, if you're working on riffs, dive into some riffs. If you're working on a guitar solo, dive into that guitar solo. Um, if you're working on full songs, dive into the full songs, you know, so that's one way you can kind of do it. But like I said, it's really hard without knowing exactly what it is you're working on. Um, Suffice it to say, find a balance and don't disregard technical practice. Don't disregard technical practice. Technical, like for lead guitar playing, from what I see, from based on the questions people give to me, the questions I get about playing lead, like 80% of people's issues when it comes to playing lead would be solved if they just practice their scales more. <laughs> Right. If they just practice their solo, their scales more, that alone is going to make you a lot better at doing a lot of the things that you're having trouble with. Like people say, I can't keep up whenever I'm trying to jam. I can't keep the rhythm. I can't, I can't stay with the tempo. My, my licks fall behind, blah, blah, blah. Well, part of that is because you, like literally, I mean, yes, you could practice the individual licks and get better at them, but you'll naturally automatically be better at all of your licks if you just practice your scales. Speaking of licks. Um, one of the things that I do with a lot of my students, and I feel like this is a super secret that I shouldn't, shouldn't tell you. No, I'm just kidding. Is I call it the diving board lick. Because to me, it's like a diving board into a swimming pool full of lead guitar playing, right? Um, so w because I'm very blues based, because I'm very blues based, I mean, I came from a blues, that's where I, that's how I first found my voice as a lead guitar player was blues. So I teach them this, this little lick right here. And I tell them to make up a whole bunch of different things in and around it. I'll, I'll teach them one option like this. Right? Very simple. So you do that. You do that one little lick. And then I'll tell them, I want you to get really good at that. And then I want you to do a bunch more. I want you to create your own versions of it. Tweak it. Create, like... 50 different things. Just that one lick can really from a blues perspective, from a, a blues inspired rock and roll guitar playing perspective, that one lick can pay, can take you so far. It can take you so far. You know, I mean, all the greats used it. David Gilmore used that thing. Um, uh, comfortably numb or, um, or, um, uh, here, I'll do that one slow in case you want to steal it. Here's David Gilmore's signature lick from Comfortably Numb, second solo. Yeah? Or another Brick in the Wall Part 2. Same thing. See? That same thing. Um... Frog. Frog music is, is another way of saying note, not uh, playing something note for note. <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah, so I had a rude awakening when I first started doing these types of videos on YouTube, especially YouTube. Facebook was more forgiving. Um, TikTok is pretty bad. Well, not bad, but it's just, it was, it was a rude awakening because you got to understand when I was teaching guitar to my students in the beginning or for years, not beginning for years, when I was teaching my guitar to students, I didn't worry about things being exact, 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 like absolutely exact, perfectly exact. I just didn't, I just, I remembered how to play the song, you know? And in fact, in some cases, since, since I teach kids, I would teach them simplified versions of songs. So I would even get, I wouldn't be used to the, I would be sort of like used to playing my simplified version of it. Um, and I'd forget where the line between the, the right way and my simplified way would end. And so I did some videos where I just got lambasted, you know, and I, I even felt like people, a lot of people on YouTube thought, w considered me like a laughing stock because, oh, there he goes playing it wrong again. But, you know, in the early on, especially, I just, you know, I was doing things by memory. I wasn't doing a lot. I was doing songs I already knew and they were by memory. They were by how I remember learning them. And I had never, I had never bothered with YouTube videos to get them absolutely perfect. You know, a lot of times, in fact, I will learn a song during a lesson and teach the student. So, um, I, it was a shock. It was a big shock and a rude awakening to me when I realized how important it was to a lot of people on YouTube that if you're teaching guitar, if you're teaching songs, you better play them like exact, you know, or people are going to jump down your back. So I've tried to get more and more exact, make sure, you know, be more careful about being as exact as possible when I make my videos. Um, so anyway, um, moving on, uh, by the way, once again, any, ask me a question. If you ask me a question and, and include a super gift, I guarantee you I will mention it and answer it as best I can. Blues scale. Well, the blues scale itself, another, what's another good blues scale to learn other than the pentatonic scale? Well, I mean, there is the blues scale, right? So that's... <laughs> So all you're doing is adding a couple notes to your pentatonic scale. So that's the same, but when you get here, you add that, you add that one right in the middle. And then same, same, not the same, then you add that one. Right? Or the way that I actually learned the blues scale or what I thought was the blues scale in the beginning was to add this minor note as well. And then you can also add a passing tone when you're playing. You don't have to just add that one. You can add that one as well. Oh, and by the way, it's also pretty darn important that you know what I call the extended pentatonic scale. So that's that's a great one because that brings you down into this lower part of the scale and up into this higher part of the scale, right? It takes you through different... Sh um, if you're learning your different forms, this takes you, travels you from one form to another. So basically, start with your regular pentatonic scale. If you don't already know this one, you, and you might, if you've been watching my videos, there's a good chance you learned it already because I've taught this in a video before. But you, you go to your normal pentatonic scale that you want to play in and in the key you want to be in. So this is bringing us, fifth fret of the sixth string is bringing us into A minor. And you start by moving down two frets from the fifth fret to the third fret. Instead of starting at the fifth fret, you go down to the third fret, and then you go three, five on the sixth string, three, five on the fifth string, and then you slide up two frets to seven. And now we're in that form, you were, you were in the main scale, and then you're gonna go five, seven, five, seven on the fourth and third string. So starting over. And then from there, you're gonna go up two frets to the ninth fret on that third string. 
And this is where it gets a little funny. You've got to do this little squeezy squeeze because, you know, the third string and second string are related to each other a little bit different. And then you're going to go 8, 10, 8, 10. And then up to 12. Now, Gilmore uses these other these other areas for uh, all the time. D uh, Jimi Hendrix uses them. Um, they're great little spots, like like. So instead of going right, that's instead of going like that, you go like that, and then there. And then, you know, instead of doing that, then you can do that and get all the way up to there. Yeah? Okay, so that's a little more of that pentatonic-based soloing ideas. Um, let's see. So we were, we were also talking about licks. No luck with chords. Well, chords are pretty important. So um, I don't know exactly what your specific area of difficulty with chords is. Um, oh, Cliff. Hey, man. Hey, Cliff. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. I got your um, I got your I am. Anyway, uh, Dave, uh, new to guitar, can play some tab, but no luck with chords. Okay, well, first of all, you need to you need to make chords a priority. In my opinion, you need to make chords a priority. Um, and in general, I think one of the the people people don't understand how systematically you have to practice chords, right? So when I teach chords, I tell you to do this, and I've I've noticed um, some other guitar teachers do have a much different perspective about this, and I kind of disagree. Um, a certain guitar teacher who's a big time YouTuber that has a million, millions of followers. He does, he does things different. He has a different, uh, uh, theory about this, but anyway, this is how I teach it. First of all, let's take an A chord. For example, A chord is the very first chord I teach my students, right? So you make your A chord and you learn how to make it. You use your chord diagrams, whatever you learn how to make your A chord. And then you take your hand off the chord. And for me, in my opinion, you should open your fingers up so that you're, f and then make it again. And then open your fingers up again, and then make the chord again. So that you're forced to reshape the chord over and over again. Right? Now, this other guitar teacher, guitar guru online, who's way bigger than me and been doing this way longer than me, he believes you should try to freeze your hand in that shape and then bring it back. And I don't know, um, the, the reason why I don't, that why I, my knee jerk reaction is to say, well, I don't know about that is because I think it's important for you to have to make the chord again, for you to have to make your fingers find that shape again. And that builds muscle memory. To me, that builds muscle memory better, maybe, but I mean, I don't know the science behind it. And I, you know, I would love to see a, um, a study or something, whatever, but no one's going to do that kind of study, right? What's the best way? But so that's my opinion, though, is make the chord over and over again with your chord hand. And then the other big trick is, um, yeah, I think there might you're right, Jeff. I think there might be value in both. The other trick is you then take multiple chords and you practice switching back and forth between them. So let's so the, let's say the second chord you're going to learn is D. And by the way, if I say A, I mean A major. If I say D, I mean D major. Um, I will say minor if I mean minor. I will say A minor if I mean minor. But if I just say play an A chord, I mean A major. So let's say you take A and D and you go back and forth. You just go back and forth between the two chords. Right? Um, and don't overwhelm yourself with um don't overwhelm yourself with too many 
chords. Start with three. Get really good at three chords. Do do the first one where with each chord, make make the chord over and over again. Right? Make the chord over and over again. And then make the D chord over and over again. And then say your third chord is E. Make the E chord over and over again. Right? And if you want to do the other method where you try to keep the shape the whole time, you can do that as well. I don't I don't generally teach my students to do that, but you can certainly try that. Um so, and then you practice switching between each of those pairs. A to D, D to E, um, E to A. E minor is a good chord to learn for sure as a beginner because it's so easy. I, I agree with that. Um, it's not the first chord I teach. It's actually the second song I teach my students has E minor. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate the kind words. Um, but yeah, so you're switching back and forth between two chords. And then, and then you need to pra you need to learn a song with a really basic song, where you can learn to switch chords while you're strumming. Right, just back and forth between two or three chords. Right. Just a super basic strumming. That's how I start my students. And then they'll learn, once they learn about, I think, eight chords, eight or nine chords, open chords, and they can do basic strum patterns, switching back and forth, just basic, down, 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 and switching between those chords. Then we start adding complicated strum patterns, or, or more complicated, like... So then they're playing the same chords and switching between the more complicated strum patterns. Thank you guys for all those kind words. I appreciate it. Looks like Facebook's taken over YouTube. <laughs> Hi, all my Facebook friends. Yeah, YouTube was in the beginning. A bunch of YouTube people were popping in to say hello. Now it seems like it's all Facebook. Um... <laughs> What, what was that? Under the bridge. Sometimes I feel... Oh, wait, no. Sometimes I feel like I haven't played Under the Bridge in a long time. I don't want to play too much of it because I actually am hoping this video does not get demonetized on YouTube. Do you like Neutral Milk Hotel? That's crazy. Hi, I'm the guy from your from your Beatles video. Which one? What do you mean you're the guy from my Beatles video? Were you were you mean you're the guy like commenting on my Beatles video? Arcata, California. I, I lived there for a year and a half. I went to Humboldt State University. Eduardo. How are you doing? Arcata, do you like uh, do you ever go to Hay Wands? When I was in high when I was in college, I went to Hay Wands all the time and eat there cheap, cheap, cheap. Sometimes re I regretted eating that burrito, but man, were they cheap and I was a college student, I didn't have any money, so. Hey, Ray, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I just did a whole spiel about that, and I, I hope I don't, you know, if you're playing it close to correct, then, you know, I wouldn't worry too much. I don't want me, I don't want people to still, to, oh, <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, I am. Well, actually, Beatles videos generally do really well, and Facebook is kind of, um, Facebook, who's paying me the most money right now, they've kind of pinned me in a corner where I have to put out a bunch of videos that do really well because they give me extra, extra, extra bonuses if I have a certain amount of videos that get a certain amount of views. So I'm trying to put up 
I'm trying to make sure. I've got two more vi Beatles videos at least coming in the near future. Um, let's see. I've, yeah, uh, yeah, I definitely have at least two more. I love the Beatles. I, the, I mean, to me, it all starts with the Beatles. You know, my favorite, um, Alex, hey, you're welcome. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for subscribing. By the way, guys, if any of you are interested, I just want to, here's a little plug. I just want to let everybody know, um, you can, um, I am on Patreon. I'm also on, um, you can also be a, a paid subscriber if you wanted to support me in that way. You can be a paid subscriber on, um, on you, on YouTube now and on Facebook. Um, and just, just so you know, one of the things that I'm, one of the big offerings, the newer offerings that I'm giving is I'm going to start doing now that I have enough subscribers on, I've got like, not, I still don't have many. I've got like, I think eight or nine, but that's enough where I'm going to start doing a chat, a hangout, like a, uh, you know, coffee chat with, um, once a month where we'll actually, well, I'll, I'll see you. You'll see me. It'll be on zoom. It won't just be live where I'm, you know, talking to you. It'll be an actual hangout on zoom where we get to all sort of interact a little bit. Um, since I don't have a whole lot of, um, subscribers on Patreon and YouTube, et cetera, yet, um, I'm going to let everybody in no matter what tier eventually, since some of these have tiers, different tiers that you can subscribe as I am going to make it. So it's got to be a certain level, but you're, if you're getting in early, you'll, we'll get to all hang out. So FYI, that's one of the things that you'll get with, um, as uh, you know, additional content. If you decided you wanted to join my Patreon, um, do I do online lessons? That is a great question. So guess what, everybody, that's another big thing. I, um, I have it scheduled. It's in November, first week of no I think it's the first week of November. I have officially I'm I've scheduled it. I'm working on all of the technical details of an online class. And it's going to be a Zoom class. I'm going to allow I'm going to allow both participants and observers. And a participant is going to pay a little more money. Um they're going to be, I believe I'm going to set it as probably for the first class, I'm going to limit it to eight participants, but I'm probably eventually it'll be 10. I just want to see how it goes with just eight. Um, and it'll be, it'll be, uh, to be a participant, it'll be $50 is my plan. I haven't set the rate for being an observer, but an observer, you just watch, you watch and you, you know, kind of follow along to, but a participant, I will be teaching you directly. I will be teaching you, um, I'll be teaching everybody directly. Um, like, you know, I'll be, the participants will be in the zoom room with me. The, the, um, the observers will just have access to the stream, to the live stream. Um, and the participants, I will be, it'll be a class. I'll be teaching you. I'll be working with you, helping you with whatever it is you're working on. Do I have any lesson DVDs? Not, not specifically. I mean, I've got so many videos. I do have one that I've been, that I was working on and I was, I was just getting to editing it and I discovered there was an audio issue, which is a big bummer. Um, but, and the, the, the DVD that I'm working on that I'm eventually going to put out once I fix this audio syncing issue, it's, it's basically, it follows my book. So I also have my book guys. If you don't know there, if you haven't seen already, I have a guitar instruction book and it's available on my website, which is Anthony Parker, exp.com. And it's a, you know, rock heroes, guitar instruction book. Um, I don't have one nearby or I'd show Wait, hold on. Ah! Fail. <laughs> now I get to see myself doing it in the video. Here, you guys, check it out. This is my guitar instruction book right here. So you can buy this online at anthonyparkerexp.com. And, um, this is a book that all my students get. And then my video, the D the video that will be available on my website, ugh, I'd like to believe that in about a month or so I can have it available. It'll follow every page. 
Brain stew by Green Day. Okay, and for the record, guys, I was being sarcastic when I, in that brain stew video. Oh, my God. I did that video, and I said, this is the most, Brain Stew by Green Day is the most original song I've ever heard. I don't know of any song it sounds like. And I thought I was being so obviously I, sarcastic. Like, I was dripping sarcasm, I thought. But apparently a lot of um, people did not realize that and were like, what do you mean? It sounds just like 25 or 624. The Manoush book. Hey, oh, you got that one, huh? Wait, shoot, my vision sucks. Greg, that's awesome. Yeah, I also wrote a guitar. I also wrote a Gypsy Jazz uh, La, La Guitarra Manoush instruction book as well. Um, I played Gypsy Jazz for a long time. King Crimson. So I have a King Crimson video. Um, let's see. Something like that. Um, um. Uh, Court of the Crimson King. It's coming soon. I'm one of the few guitarist YouTubers that you can learn from. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I, I think there are some pretty amazing YouTubers. Um, and I'm really late to the game. I put this off for a long time. I tried to get, I tried to get traction on YouTube doing a lot of other things. And... Um, I tried to do all, I tried to do just my original music and I tried to do this and I tried to, and none of it worked. None of it got any plays. And I was just avoiding doing guitar because I was like, there's so many guitar guys on, on YouTube already, girls and guys doing great guitar videos. I don't, why, why should I join at this point? I'm too late in the game, but apparently I'm kind of one of the few that's doing shorts. That's specializing on shorts. And guess what? YouTube is pushing short content more than any others. Big time YouTubers are complaining that their videos, their long form videos and their re are, are getting fewer and fewer views. Their reach is shrinking. They're frustrated and they're hearing from the YouTube employees that it's short content that YouTube is pushing. So I'm for once in my life, I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> I got your sarcasm, but I had been looking for the name of that song for a while and learned the song because of you. Right on. Okay, so that is a really... Most of the... Uh, okay, so Daniel is saying most of the other you, others on YouTube will say, learn this if you're a beginner. And when you watch them, you, you're like, if you can play that, you're not a beginner. I agree with you. I saw a video recently. Um, top of the afternoon to ya. I saw a video um, somewhat recently where, this, where one of the big YouTubers, one of the big time YouTubers said, um, you know, here are five acoustic guitar songs that, all, that beginners should learn. And I watched them. I'm like, those aren't beginning. Like they put Wish You Were Here on there. Wish You Were Here is not a beginning song. It looks easy. But it's got quite a lot, um, quite a lot of stuff in it that is way not beginning. You know, stuff that beginners, actual beginners can't do. So it's like when people on YouTube are talking to saying beginners do the, can do this, beginners can do this. They're really meaning, um, they're, they're talking about like, uh, people who are more intermediate than beginners or they've forgotten what being a beginner is like. Rick Beato is the, um, uh, Rick, I love Rick Beato. In fact, I rip, I, I merciful, I shamelessly steal his not steal his, but I, I, his channel totally inspired me, but yeah, Rick Beato, his stuff is a lot of his stuff. I find is so complicated that I do think if you can play that, 
you don't need him to learn it. <laughs> like he'll be like, try this. Rick is, but he is an astonishingly amazing guitar player. Like Rick, Rick is unbelievable. Okay. I, yeah, I'll play a request if I know it. I'll teach a request. Um, but yeah, so that's something. See, to me, a beginner, when I think of a beginner, I think of someone who's still trying to figure out how to strum chords and switch chords. You know, I think of someone who is still struggling with those basic concepts, strumming chords, switching chords, um, maybe just starting to try to play their pentatonic scale and sort of struggling to get through it. That's what I think of when I think of a beginner. I don't think of someone who can pull off Wish You Were Here. That's an, and, and this video I saw, which is like, and this was by like a, uh, a YouTuber with million subscribers, more than that, million follow, subscribers, followers, whatever. And I was just astounded. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, you know, people have different perspective about it. Yeah, Rick, I agree with you. I will never say bad words about Rick. It's the only thing I have noticed is that some of his stuff, I'm like, you, I need more. I'm, I think of myself as, you know, as near expert guitar player, but that is like masterful. And you just like said, here, just do this. And I'm like, uh, can you break that down for me? <laughs> I struggle with finishing songs. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean by that? You struggle with like learning the entire song, every little bit of a song. I think that, um, you know, uh, that, uh, yeah, you got to be more specific about struggling with finishing songs. Do you start learning a song and you have a goal in mind that I'm going to learn this whole thing, but then you lose steam on it and you move on? Because one thing that might be happening there, this is just a thought, is that you're picking songs that are a little bit too hard. If you pick songs that are a little bit too hard for you, then you're going to lose steam in trying to learn them. And you're going to get frustrated. Yeah, I dropped my pick and I picked up a crappy one. Hold on. All right, what? Hold on. Let's get some more drive on this bad boy. Wow, a lot of good ones. Um, let's see. Um, uh, you're welcome, Ralph. You're welcome. Brown sugar was a fun one for me to learn. I got a lot. I took a lot of flack for that one. People really. There's a lot of like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, virtue signaling and um, and uh, you know, attempts to cancel that song, which I don't agree with because I don't agree that it's. I believe it's actually. Uh, being misinterpreted by some people as meaning things that it does not. But yes, um, let's see. Um, yeah, so uh, Osriel, <laughs> um, I think you might need to pick slightly easier songs. I think that's probably what's going on for you. If you're struggling to finish it, you might need to, you might need to um, pick slightly easier songs to learn. Um, let's see, what's my process for learning a song? Well, that depends on what it is. Am I learning the chords of a song? You know, if I'm learning, if I don't know anything about the song and I want to just play it, then I'm going to learn the chords. I'm going to learn the chords. I'm going to try and figure out the strum pattern. If there's an intro riff, I'm going to work on that. Um, some pieces of advice, if you're learning a solo, for example, my biggest piece of advice of all is make sure you know the um, scales they're using. Hey, man. Hey, uh, who is this? I apologize. My, my, the, the little writing on screens is hard for me to read, but Jeffy Jaffini, thank you very much. Um, 
Thank you from England, sir. Um, anyway, uh, the bar chord progressions on Soul to Squeeze. Okay, I, I'm not, I have to hear that song to remember what it is. A lot of songs I know by ear, but I don't know by name. Um, but yeah, so definitely, um, what was I saying? Um, if you're learning a solo, make sure you know the scales they're playing. If you know the scale being used in a guitar solo, it's going to make the solo so much easier to learn. Um, is that, so are these requests? Oh yeah, I did fly like an ego. <laughs> Right, I did. I did a video on "Fly Like an Eagle" because when I was young, I learned it like this. Because I didn't, I just learned it by ear. I didn't have tabs, and I had it wrong. And then when I made the video on it, I was like, "That's not how you play it." And so I changed the concept of the video that I was going to make to I learned it wrong when I was a kid, and now I just corrected it. To, right. Um, let's see, Holiday by Green Day. That's I teach that to a lot of my students. But I teach Holiday to like this. So it's simple. To a lot of my students, I teach it like this. Right, because I want it to be simple for them because, you know, that's a lot harder. Uh, but I, I also use Holiday to teach them bark power chords. Right? Oh, my goodness. It's getting pretty late, so I'm going to have to... Um, Boston. Hey, Boston. How you doing, mine? Oh, thanks, Crispy453. I appreciate it. Do you have a practice routine? Do you recommend one? Um, yeah, well, again, it always depends on what what your goals are, where you are in your playing. Me personally, no, because I just play the guitar all the time. <laughs> I teach the guitar. I, I am not in a stage of, of my playing where I'm trying to work on making everything better like making my technical playing better, getting a lot better at this, a lot better at that. What I tend to do is I, I learn a song. I'm like, oh, I need to do this. I want to do this song for a video and I'll quickly learn the song. But um, a Hendrix riff. Of course, now the video is going to get demonetized because I played that. <laughs> uh, hold on. Hey, Bay, where are my glasses? Um, I see that uh, Osriel, and thank you for the super gift. So I saw the Smashing Pumpkins and Jane's Addiction two days ago. What approach do you recommend when learning a new song? Any advice playing with a, and I don't see what that is. Hold on. A drummer? Playing with a drummer? <laughs> Get a good drummer. <laughs> That's my advice. <laughs> um, if you have a good drummer, then you just follow him and you follow his beat. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, um, I don't like Green Day, but I learned their songs. Yeah, they're great beginner songs. I teach Green Day so much when I'm beginning. How about Can't You? You know, I've done that song. I've taught that song. Or, um... Anyway, um, so learning a new song. 
Well, based on what you were saying before, Azriel. One thing right off the bat I would say is make sure you're picking a song that is um, that is the appropriate song for you to learn. And and um, also that was out of tune, sorry. And also think about when you're picking a song to learn, I you got to think about what skills you are hoping to get from that song. Hey, Savannah, Georgia, how you doing? How you doing? What my favorite song to play from Nirvana is probably... Hold on. That's probably my favorite Nirvana song to play. Um, but anyway, um, I'm sorry, Azrael. I keep getting um, I keep getting sidetracked. Um, Howdy from Tennessee. Hello. Um, yeah, really think about what... Yes, lithium. Really think about what it is you want to get out of the song. Okay? So don't just randomly pick songs necessarily. I mean, yes, you want to pick songs you like. But okay, I'm struggling with strumming chords or I'm struggling with, you know, whatever, with with this type of strum pattern or with chords where where you have to switch chords mid strum pattern. Okay, then learn how to play. um... You know, learn how to play Wreck Me Baby by Tom Petty. Right? Learn something like that. Um, oh, I want to play bar chords. I want to get really good at bar chords. Okay. Learn, work on all along the watchtower, you know, but change, maybe change it to an easier key. You can play it. I think the original key was C sharp. Right? So always think about what skills you're wanting to learn. Other than that, you know, a lot of this, unfortunately, a lot of stuff, it's like, I got to see you play. I got to see you play to know what you need, what you particularly need to know. Okay, last night I was trying. I don't, oh, uh, last night I was trying to learn Blackbird. Are eight size strings good for a Les Paul? Sure, try them. Hey, Nevada. I can't do a lot of the finger picking, so I struggled with it and I gave up. Blackbird's not an easy song, first of all. Don't feel bad that you gave up. Blackbird is a hard song to play. Um, you know, in fact, I had to reteach myself because... Hold on. Because I was playing it wrong. But my advice... This is my advice for you, though. Um, if you are determined to play it, if you're absolutely determined to play it, my advice for you is slow it way down and focus on one tiny section. Just this, just work on this much, right? Or if you want to do it like Paul, right? Just focus on that much, that much. That's it. No more. Not as not any more of it and get good at that much. You'll be shocked if you get people tend to tend to they, they, they cast their net too wide. And they try to learn too much, too many songs, too many like, um, like if you are really struggling with a song and you're determined to learn it, even though it might be too hard for you, then you got to shrink it down and learn a smaller amount. You'd be surprised. Bach. (laughs) Uh, yeah. Cherub Rock video. That was a good video. I was happy about that one. Anyway, um, 
So, why, so uh, John, John Pena. Dire Strait, Sultans of Swing is one of my favorite songs to play, but I can't get used to soloing without a pick. Then use a pick. Who cares? Don't worry about about the gatekeepers. Use a pick. I, I use a pick. Don't worry about doing it like they say you're supposed to do it. I mean, serious, that's the, those are the things that really bother me about the you're doing it wrong is when it's something as silly as, oh, he used a Strat, not a Telecaster, or he used a Les Paul, not a Strat. Use what guitar you want to use. Play it the way you want to play it. If you want to use a pick, use a pick. Don't worry about not using a pick. If you're, because here's the thing about Mark Knopfler, for example. You could try and learn to do it with your fingers, but he is a master of, of claw hammer finger picking. You are not going to suddenly snap your fingers and become a master of claw hammer finger picking. That is a, a serious skill. What he can do is not easy. He spent years developing that claw hammer style, right? So... People who complain, oh, you didn't do it with the pick, you did it with your fingers. They're like being, they're just, you know, forget them. They don't understand, you know, yeah, okay, you can play it badly with your finger. Like, I can play it with my finger, but I can't play it the way he plays it with the claw hammer going on, you know. So anyway, that's my little diatribe on that. So, uh, um, sorry, man. It is. Oh, anyway. Yes. Um, someone was saying, and I can't see your name, what your your, but I agree with you. He says, suggest playing with people to, she said yes to Azrael to play with people. You know, I teach my students in groups and that's one of the reasons why, because I like them to play together. I like them jamming together. Uh, Jimmy page type riff. <laughs> Oh, well, you're welcome, Scott. Thanks for, thanks for chiming in. I'm glad to be of help. My, you know, one of my, I, I, one of the things that I thought would, one of the air, uh, what, how do I put this? One of the things that I, the, the ty- one of the types of people that I thought would get what I was trying to do are my people, middle-aged people, people in their forties and fifties who who played for a long time, but never got that good or, or whatever, or quit or picked it up and put it down. And I wanted to inspire them. You know, I don't necessarily want to just be a guitar teacher where you're just, or I'm just showing you how to play this and showing you how to play that. I like the idea of reminding you how cool certain songs are and show and playing it and letting you be like, Oh, I can kind of play that. Yeah. 60. Then as far as I'm, that's middle-aged. You know, I like the idea of just sort of playing, playing someone a bit of a song and reminding them, oh, that's a cool song. And then maybe they notice, oh, I could actually play that song. That doesn't look incredibly hard. And, oh, I see now how it's being played. I didn't know that before. So that's, that's, yeah, that's what I've, I had a feeling that that's what I would, uh, that that's what I would attract. Those are the type of people that I wanted to bring in and have them, you know, get interested in, in my videos. But anyway, everybody, it is, I've been on here for over an hour now. So I need to, I need to, uh, end the live stream. Um, I really, really thank you. Appreciate everybody for, for popping in and saying hello and, and, um, I hope that you got something out of this video. Um, you know, please, uh, by the way, please watch my long form videos. (laughs) 
they're finally starting to, I'm finally monetized on YouTube and I would love it if I, I think that so many of the people who discovered me discovered my shorts, short form video. And it'd be great if people started watching the longer videos, but yeah. So once again, I'm on Patreon. I, you can, I am now, you can now subscribe to me on YouTube and on Facebook. You can become a paid subscriber um, and please do all, do any of that stuff. I will, if you're, if you want to support me, I will be offering a class online soon. As I said, um, keep an eye out for that. Uh, shoot me an IM on Facebook. If you want me to make, if you want to make sure that I'll put you on the list to let you know, um, cause I would, cause that's going to be, my class is coming soon and it, I will be, it'll be, I will actually be interacting. Oh, and by the way, if you are a subscriber on Patreon, or on Facebook, an actual paid subscriber, which is, you know, on Facebook, it's 10 bucks a month on Patreon. It's like as little as three, four bucks a month. You will get first choice. You'll be the first, you'll get the first choice at, and you'll get a discount on being, uh, uh, what's it called? Being, uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Being a participant in the guitar class. So 80s hair metal. I actually do like 80s hair metal, but I got to go, guys. So thank you very much, everybody. I am going to end this live stream right now. Thank you for coming in and hanging out with me. I'm stopping.